Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who looks shows no slash or spouses, spouses, minions, meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to go back to Syria because uh, as I, I did a video about, uh, I think about October 20th, and at that time the Assad regime, the government regime in Syria, Damascus, um, had uh, significantly uh, upticked its airstrikes against opposition, obviously taking advantage of uh, current U.S. foreign policy uh, to strike ISIS positions in Syria. And uh, so at the time, that was escalation enough as we are where we are at now uh, is uh, reaching the point of the ridiculous. Because now, in the past 10 days, we have the Syrian Air Force conducting 762 airstrikes. And uh, that's about three times the, the total number of airstrikes uh, by the United States in Syria. And of, of uh, the 300 strikes by uh, so-called coalition forces in uh, Syria, 200 of those have been around Kobani. So we have a serious uptick, and it's quite noticeable. Noticeable to the point where uh, the United States Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel has even acknowledged that Assad is taking advantage of this situation. But it should come as no surprise because national security advisors uh, were warning of this very uh, possibility. And, uh, and uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks like uh, it's just being ignored. And um, the rebels have, uh, are what's left, the remnants of the Free Syrian Army, have been pleading for U.S. help. And now they're saying that <clears throat> on top of the fact that there's been 762 airstrikes against uh, opposition in Syria, but we've also had uh, the uh, 750 killed in the last, just in the last week. And uh, Syria's launched defenses in, in Hama, Damascus, and Aleppo, some of these uh, main points of contention. And uh, incidentally, uh, apparently 150 free Syrian army are now uh, arriving in Kobani as well to help uh, bolster the Kurds there. So kind of an interesting development. The Free Syrian Army now is trying to score some points um, with their Western masters uh, by helping in Kobani. But uh, a couple of recent uh, developments uh, are going to uh, make this whole dynamic all the more interesting. One is a, a story that uh, my friend uh, John Barleycorn sent me about uh, so, uh, upwards of 70 to 80 um, Syrian army officers were, have reportedly been beheaded. Um, a combined effort by El Nusra Front and ISIS had taken over a, a government uh, headquarters and uh, captured these uh, soldiers and has reportedly uh, beheaded them. I'll attach the uh, story below. Uh, and then we also have uh, the fact that ISIS and El Nusra combined. Uh, in attacks in other areas, uh, including on the Free Syrian Army. And uh, this is a direct result of the fact that the United States decided when they were going to do airstrikes in Syria that they would not only uh, hit ISIS positions, they would, all, they would also hit El Nusra Front uh, positions. And they thought they were, uh, El Nusra Front had come to think that they were the good guys because they were fighting the Assad government. So, uh, so now we have El Nusra Front uh, combining with ISIS to take on uh, their uh, United States-backed representatives, the Free Syrian Army, and, and po this could possibly uh, be a trend um, as a result of uh, U.S. foreign policy choices. Um, so now, and uh, let's remember that as of April, there, there, there was a split between ISIS and El Nusra, and they haven't really combined their efforts since, so this would be a, a big development. And uh, another part of this is the fact that uh, we would have the Free Syrian Army would now have a uh, three-front war, and that doesn't seem very smart uh, considering uh, U.S. foreign policy there because now Free Syrian Army will be fighting the El Nusra Front, the Free Syrian Army will be fighting ISIS, and the Free Syrian Army will be fighting the Assad government. And uh, that's a lot to chew on. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and I've brought up in other videos, this whole timetable issue. The United States uh, talks about uh, uh, somehow training and arming the Free Syrian Army uh, in the next year uh, that's supposedly going to take on the Assad government 
inside a country that's increasingly dominated by ISIS, and yet uh, we have these events unfolding in days, uh, weeks, and months. It doesn't seem like the, the issue has a year. Like I say, we have this uh, Syrian government now, uh, 762 airstrikes in the last 10 days, and uh, theoretically upwards of 750 uh, uh, killed, including many uh, free Syrian army uh, forces. Uh, will there be any free Syrian army forces left uh, when it gets time uh, for the United States to find somebody to train and arm? It certainly doesn't look like it at this pace. And then, uh, as I mentioned, with the, the beheadings, uh, if this story seen, it gets confirmed that uh, the Syrian officers uh, were beheaded, uh, then we're going to see the uh, government in Damascus and the Assad government uh, directing uh, quite a bit more of their efforts uh, towards bombing ISIS as well. So while the United States is busy uh, taking on ISIS, protecting uh, Kobani, uh, we have the rest of Syria as a playground for uh, Assad and government forces to retake a lot of uh, uh, main objectives and uh, unleash uh, massive airstrikes against the opposition and uh, obliterating the opposition while the United States uh, focuses in focuses in on ISIS, which incidentally is another component and the most successful component of Assad's opposition. So in some weird way, we got the United States and, and Assad now joining in a massive uh, air blitz against all the opposition against the Assad uh, government in Syria. A strange turn of events. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?